All right. So I don't. It's I'm like gonna have to super adjust. Super blue. Yeah, I have to adjust the camera. I, for some reason lately, it's been weird about lighting. Not lighting, but um, it resets every time. So oh, maybe it didn't this time. Oh no, it did. Yeah, see how the white balance is way down. So I gotta like turn it up. Oh, until it's cracked. Yep. So I go a little bit past halfway, and then I it shows some color, and then I call it good. So anyways, uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Sorry we are a little late. I had another stream I was doing on another channel and uh, was answering some questions and forgot, not forgot, I lost track of time. So I do want to say something awesome. My wife is amazing. She knows it. Um, she gave me my Father's Day gift a little bit early. Uh, and it's because... She got me the Pathfinder 2nd Edition Core Rulebook. And it's something I've been talking about a lot during streams with friends on the Discord and basically everywhere. And, you know, I was I was interested in it. And then there was a night, I don't even know how this how it really, really spiraled, but one night Paula was like, So you think you would want to like try that? Because it sounds like it would be a lot of fun or something like that. And I was like, oh. Yeah, I definitely would want to. Like, I've been wanting to, kind of. I mean, I really wanted to jump in on the playtest and stuff, too, back in the day. And I was like, yeah. And so then she started asking me questions about the system. And I answered and stuff. And I don't know. I figured, oh, maybe somebody mentioned it in one of her female gamer groups or something. Didn't think anything of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was like, the other day, I did that chat with Michael, the dead Aussie gamer from Australia. We were talking about Pathfinder. And whether I should buy it. And I afterwards, I was like, yeah, I think I want to buy it. I really think I want Pathfinder. <laughs> and so then, um, you know, Paula nice. was like, well, it can wait. We don't need to buy it right now. When would you play it anyways? And I was like, I can get a group like overnight almost. Which I probably could. I just don't know if I have time for that. But um, anyways... So, again, didn't think anything of it. And then today, I was like, after dinner, I was like, I'll, I'll wash the dishes. I feel like going and laying down before we stream later. And she's like, are you sure? And I was like, I'm just really tired. And she's like, well, are you sure? Because we kind of got a surprise for you. You just got to go to the living room. And I was like, oh, surprise, huh? All right. <laughs> so I, I had to close my eyes. And... That was very uncomfortable because I was waiting for her to put like a dead hornet or something in my hand or a dead spider, something really? weird. Really? You thought I was like being like super malicious or something? I mean, that would be a surprise. <laughs> so uh, I didn't know what to expect, but um, she did not do that to me. So that was good. Um, you know, but yeah. So we looked through, I looked through every single page. Paula looked through most of it. Um, but inside the cover, she had the kids right in it. And uh, it was really funny. So it says, Dad, I love you. Have a nice day. I hop you love today. <laughs> it meant, it meant to say hope. hope. I know, but it's fun for me to make fun of it. And later on when she gets older and I can point out that she spelled it wrong, it'll be great. Anyways, then it says... I don't even know. It's supposed to say love, but he wrote L-O-V and then a B instead of an E. And so then he tried to write it again, but instead of an E, he wrote a D. So it looks like... It looks like L-O-L-B, L-O-L-D. Yep. <laughs> and then it says daddy. But... <laughs> <laughs> and then it says, we wanted to give you an early Father's Day gift. Love, Paula, Lily, Caleb, and so that was that was really sweet of them. So um, I was worried he was gonna go rogue and buy it, so that's why he got it early. Yeah. No. I. I. It was. It was great. It was a good gift. Um, I would never go rogue and buy it. What are you talking about? Well, I no, figured you would just keep talking about it. Like, Until we bought it. <laughs> yeah, and I was just like, he's going to keep doing it, and then he's going to force me to give it to him early, and I'm like, I should just decide that I'm going to give it to him early. So he's not really forcing me. Yeah. No, it was great. Oh, shoot. 
I just opened that window and then closed it before I copied the link. I'm sharing the link to the stream real quick. We're, we're probably only going to go for like 45 minutes or until Paula crashes, basically. Yeah. Um, and I'll probably look at this book a little more. Oh, while we're on here? Why not? I, I'm really wanting to play a barbarian. Like, really bad. Um, well, you like barbarians anyway. I do, and I like... I don't know. There's something about the way... I don't know. It just sounds cool that you could be like an animal instinct or a dragon. In, I think it's instincts. Uh, or a, bar, a giant instinctual barbarian. And it does different things. I don't know. It's way more interesting to me than like how 5e does like the paths. Like that totem path. Like that's not interesting to me sounding. Or ancestral guardians kind of sounds cool. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, just the naming of some of the stuff in, for the barbarian in there is just like, yeah, whatever. You okay. know? Yeah. So, I don't know. L-O-L-V-L-L-V. Sounds like an eldritch word for love. <laughs> See? You get it. All right. So, there we go. There we go. And then I'm just going to share it to a couple more places. And then we will call it good. Oh, I don't know. Well, but yeah, so it was a huge surprise. And um, again, the thing that's interesting, so this book is really, really thick. I mean, we're talking over 600 pages. Uh, 638 pages if you count like the credits and stuff that they have in the back. Um. So Paula has not seen the character sheet yet, I don't think. And mm -hmm. I told her it's pretty daunting, so I'm going to show her real quick. So here is your main page I of your character sheet. Oh, that's not terrible, You though. don't think that's terrible? It just, it looks bad because they have boxes around everything. Right. That's and, what makes it look bad, shapes. but, like, think It's like about wasted it. space, kind it's of. It's just, this is your total here. It's just they add yeah. in the proficiency, the skill, right? Like... yeah. So that's why, so that you break it down. So when mm -hmm. you get a new item, you just put it in the item one and you re-add it. It's it's mm -hmm. actually better. Sure. But like, so then so you then have to sheet So you understand through. where it's coming from. So I do, that's what I was going to say. I like how they have this spelled out where as which level you get your background feats or your ancestry feats or your class feats. I do like that on this page. Um, and then you kind of get into the less crunchy stuff you start getting into personality on page three um but yeah so it's it's interesting you know and it, it's got on here like the different actions you can do so you get like because again there's more to this system than other games so you want to write down what you can do because trying to remember the 17 different things you can do gets kind of hard but yeah and then spells yeah. the spell one's kind of kind of fine too no, I actually think that's going to make it better. It might. It might. So we're definitely going to play. Uh, we've got a Call of Cthulhu game scheduled for the 13th. Um, so that will be a Saturday. Paula really wanted to play. My friend Will Stats is going to run it. Um, I think we're going to try and have four or five total players. It'll be a one shot for sure. If it goes beyond that, I will jump out of it, but I might produce it as a game, uh, which Paula would still play probably because if it continues, that means she had a good time. Um, and so, yeah, we'll just do our thing with that. And then after that, in the same slot on a Saturday, in between the other couple Saturday games we have, I think we're going to try and play Pathfinder 2nd Edition. And... We talked to Michael from Dead Aussie Gamer. He said that he can do it until the Children's Center opens up again. Mm -hmm. uh, which, by July, that might be opened up again. So that he may not end up being able to play. But we'll see. And Roll Stats will run it. And there's a couple other people in my Discord who are already interested. So, uh, Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, people are interested fast. in playing Pathfinder. For sure. That was super fast. I think the problem is most people don't want to run 
second edition Pathfinder. Yeah, because it's got to be overwhelming. It's a, I think at first, yeah. Like, you know. But once you know the system, I bet you it's not that bad. I mean, 3.5 wasn't bad. Yeah, I don't know. I never, never ran it. I did run an original Pathfinder, though. Yeah. I and mean, it was, it was fine. pretty much the same. Mm-hmm. I mean, not the, I, it's not the same. It's okay. it's Sorry. a streamlined version of it. It's not the same, but it's extremely similar. Mm-hmm. So, you know. I mean, Pathfinder was 3.5 D&D. They called it, a lot of people called it 3.75 D&D. Yeah, I mean, it was like there were only some situations in which it was different, right? Right. Yeah, they I mean, streamlined some of the rules, so, like the grappling and stuff like I that. I mean, it was really easy. It it was no big deal at all to jump from three point five or from three point five to Pathfinder. Right. Like, there's zero learning curve. Right. You know, because the majority of it is the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. No worries. Everyone agrees that's basically the way it is, and the OGL kind of allowed it to be done that. So again, the OGL open gaming license that oh, 3.5 okay. and 3.0 had. Yeah, cool. You made it sound like it was like, I don't know, like a gangster club or something. It is like a gangster that. club the, for D&D The fans. OGL, like, okay. You've never heard of that? No, I didn't know that it was a thing. <laughs> yes, it is. It is 100% a thing. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. So, anyways. So, yeah, we were looking through this book earlier. I, I made mention that the Barbarian is the same as Paula's miniature um, mm-hmm. for our D&D game. And my son Caleb's like, really? It's, is it painted? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, can I play with it? Because he wants to play with miniatures so bad all the time. Um, but, yeah. So, anyway, so now I feel like I have to show him the miniature at least in the next couple days. Uh, I love it though. Oh, he, of course he will. Of course he will. But yeah, so that's what's uh, going on. It's been an eventful night. I'm pretty pretty thrilled. Can't deny that. I'm excited to to dive into this. I do have some prep I have to do tomorrow. Uh, depending on how much we get done on. The painting tonight and how we all feel we may or may not do this again tomorrow night uh, but we for sure well i will for sure be doing some prep so that's a guarantee so you can come talk to him about interesting D D things and not yep. have to watch me paint possibly yep um it's so they're in a dungeon because this is our saturday game and they've gone to the second floor of the dungeon. And it's basically going to be a mega dungeon. We've, I've already had this, you know, in my mind, but that's how I want to do it. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty excited about it. So I just got to write some story stuff based on the last session. So tomorrow I'll probably watch the last session very carefully uh, so that I can make sure I answer any questions they had. And, uh, yeah. Cameron said, one would think it would be easy, but I ran into one guy who thought the changes in Pathfinder 1E from 3.5 were like five feet thick brick wall, lol. Oh, no. (laughs) That's bad. I felt like they were so close. Yeah, I don't know. I played... So I felt like second edition was really simple. Advanced was like extremely simple. Um... I never played 3 or 3.5, but I did run and play Pathfinder 2nd or 1st edition. And I felt like the thing, so I did get frustrated a bit when we had to look up a lot of rules because I'm very big on pacing. And the reason I'm big on pacing is because I get bored if nothing's happening at a game. Especially since we usually run games at night and I'm usually tired and so that just doesn't help. You know, I was thinking about that the other day and that's being tired and running games is probably my big problem (laughs) you know when it comes to my patience you know um but yeah it's uh it was for me it was tough because again felt like i had to look up a lot of rules i didn't know how every feat worked i didn't know how every spell worked not that you need to 
But like, even in like 5e D and D, you know, if you don't know how a feat works, it's not hard for a player to like just tell you how it works and you do it wrong or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, like, I've had a player once when I first started running 5e, I had a player in Adventures League try to tell me that Warcaster meant that he didn't have to make a con check for concentration. Oh. Yeah. He's like, no, I, I took it because I don't have to make a concentration check. And I was like, well, sir, I know what that feat does. Well, unfortunately <laughs> for you, there's only eight feats in this book. So right. every single one memorized, and each one of them only contains one sentence about your no. ability. It's a little so bit. So there's than that. zero room for interpretation here. <laughs> no, but um, you know, I, I've had a lot That's of people try I to feel do some about crazy stuff. feats in fifth edition. I actually I like the feats they have. I just wish they had a few more. And I wish they had more that were a little more specific. For example, I wish you had feats for the different weapon types to make them different. Um, like to give you like okay here's an example give us an incentive to use a dagger so have like a dagger master feat where you automatically for every attack whether it's a bonus attack action or a regular attack action you can do two attacks so if you're dual wielding daggers at first level and you have this feat you could technically attack four times i mean it's not game breaking you're talking about a d4 four times you know what i mean yeah. Like, okay, maybe four times is a bit much. Right? Yeah. But three times isn't, so maybe you can't do it as your bonus action. You know, you just get, you know, a quick double attack with your primary attack. You know, I think that would be cool. Because now you're talking about a total of 12 damage. That's right in line with your great sword, your maul. You know what I mean? And now, though, it feels like, okay, now there's a reason to actually use a dagger as your primary weapon. Or, you know, give... Yeah, but your, your, your base is lower. I mean, so that's The average incentive. would be better. Yeah. But it's still... You know? I'm just saying that that's the incentive. Your base is lower. What do you mean? Sorry. I mean, yes. The, the minimum amount of damage you can do is higher, is what I mean. Like Only if you use that. Yeah. Feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think that would be a very good feat that's not game-breaking, and it it adds to the game in the sense that people are now going to play a more variety of characters, right? Yeah, I think... As I of wish... right now, nobody uses daggers unless they're out of their other weapons, really. I think I wish there were more feats that seemed... You know, it's like all the feats are either, hey, you get spells, or like, here, we'll help you with weapons. I don't know. No, I'm not you just don't like the non ones, the ones that don't. Yeah, I just feel like they all suck. Like, none of them are interesting. <laughs> There's no, like, flavor. We should know? do a hot take video where you just talk about feats. They're just, they're just <laughs> terrible. Like, let's go through them one by one. They suck. Like, you suck, you suck, you suck. Lucky is useful no matter what. You suck, you suck, you suck. Like, nobody wants Which to Which is do. funny, because I while Lucky is useful, it's, like, one of my least favorite exciting feats in the game. It doesn't add to the game for me, other than Yeah, I'm just advantage. saying, like, the rest of the feats, like, they're so boring. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Like, let's come up with the most boring thing. Like, uh, you yeah, can now know. use a shield. Sweet. What? You know, that's I don't not know. Already, that's a feat? No, you have a feat that is like shield master. So now yeah, rather than taking half saying. damage on a failed save, you can get rid of it completely. Yeah, I just, I guess I just wish they were cooler though. Like, give me something interesting, right? <laughs> like the one, you know, barbarian trait, whatever, breath weapon or something like that. Like, give me something cool. Like, give me something that sounds... Like, add to the culture of my character. Add to my character's story. Sure. By coming up with something cool that I need to incorporate. Could do that. You know? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could do that. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Like, But I, I would love more feats that 
change the dynamics of combat a little more. Like, and this is what I wanted if I ever created my own system, is I wanted something like, oh, you could have a guy who's good with a long sword, and that's like its own feat that allows you to do things like um, disarm people. And a short sword might allow you to uh, get bypass an armor of one AC or something. I don't know. I'm just throwing out stupid ideas at this point. But like a maul, if you had like a maul feat, it might allow you to break somebody's armor or break their weapons or something. You know, do That'd something cool. as a, as like a, like if you attack and you hit, you also can do this. You know what I mean? And so now, again, you're adding a variety of options to the game. None of it's really game breaking, especially since five E combat is like three rounds, right? It's it's pretty balanced, like well balanced in that regard. So. If you break their armor on round one, all you're doing on that one creature is probably making it so that they are dead in the second round. Or they're just more likely to be hit, so it's still probably going to go three rounds. But, you know, just mm-hmm. uh, add some variety to it. That That's what I want. And that's what I want to see in a future edition. You know, when they release a new one in like 12 years, because they've still got a lot of stuff to do with this edition, I feel. Yeah, you think so? I do. I don't think that they're going with a new edition for a long time. It's it's every year it's record sales. Like all time. Like they sell more in a year these days than they ever sold with all the previous yeah, editions. Yeah, but that's tug- because yeah, the the game is getting more popular, not because people really like this edition more than others. They do like this edition. Most people won't even play other editions. Most people. Mm, there's still a lot of like first edition homeboys hanging out there. Mm, that's OSR I feel people, like everybody is either plays fifth or they're like I play, you know, A D and D. Sure, but the point is, is five E. There's like the people who are into it are into it. Like Dave from Nerdarchy is an example. It's the casual fans love five E and they're not going anywhere. They're just not. They might yeah, try but other like, genres. It's hard, it's hard but to be a casual interested. fan sometimes. Maybe. You know? Maybe. Like, I'm just saying, the, the way that people pick apart things, here I am complaining about feeds. Yeah. But the way people pick things apart, sometimes it's hard to be a casual fan. If I'm a casual fan, I feel like. Maybe mm. I'm like a step above a casual fan, but I don't feel you're like I'm a You're a long diehard. time. Yeah, you're a long time fan, though. Like, a long time D&D player. You've even said in the past you don't like playing a ton of other systems. That's changing recently. Um, but yeah, it wasn't well, like wanna, that 10 years ago. I guess I would like... So I'm not saying I'm a great role player. I'm just saying I would like to do more role playing because I think long term I would like that more. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying I'm great at it, but I would like some practice. And other there are other games sometimes that seem to be more heavy on that side. Um, which is why I say, oh, I want more flavor. I want, you know, your characters to be more unique. I want them to be more different, Mm -hmm. which 5th edition is, like, a little bit more generic. So I'm just trying to figure out how to get that It's vanilla ice cream. It's it's good, but it's vanilla. Yeah, 100%. (laughs) That's the problem, man. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) Yeah, man. What do I want? What color do I want his eyes to be? Green. Mm, I don't think that's going to stand out well, though. Like, you're going to think it's going to stand out, but, like, it's not. I don't know. What do you want? Red? Red always stand. Orange? Mm, yeah, I was thinking that if you want it to look like red, a gem. I should make it orange. I feel like it's going to get pulled. There's the human. You know? Yeah. Do you know? Or I, I you get you. Entertaining? No, I, you're right. I don't know. It's going to go one way or the other. I don't know which way. We'll see what happens. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Why do you hate eyes? 
Don't worry, it's a stink bug. <laughs> we get these stupid stink bugs in our, our house, in our room. And in the old house on the other side of the state, we used to get these stupid, like... June bugs. Yeah, June bugs. They look like ladybugs. Oh, they're so annoying. Although, it's not as bad as people who get box elder bugs. Like, though, like we get maybe one or two of those a year. But I've been to houses where those things, like, fill up in, like, windows and nastiness. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's gross. So gross. Although, I feel like it'd be easy to get rid of, too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we don't have dead bugs all over our windows or anything. No. No, like, and our and our five year old takes care of them when he sees them in a bed. Most of the time, our house is pretty clean. So this is interesting. I don't know if I like how they organize the human half elf half orcs. It's all like one yeah. section. So it's like, you know. Do you like this? Yeah, I think it looks great. Does it look okay? Yeah, don't you? Yeah, I mean, it looks like a fountain. Yeah. I think the only thing that I would consider adding if you wanted it would be like some sort of green vine thing, but then you can't use it. Well, what about, I mean, if you look, it's got like a lip thing. You could do something to add some pizzazz to it. Yeah, I thought about, you know. Okay, if you don't want to, it's fine. What are you thinking? Oh, I don't know. If you wanted to do like something like the brown or the gold as like a trim piece. I don't know. That mm -hmm. might not look good. I don't know. In the corner and make it but is it gonna look good you think or is it gonna ruin it uh cameron says when i get my game tested enough would you two like a copy for fun there are a lot of role-playing prompts built in so tell i tell us about your game cameron tell us about your game first but i'm just up front i'm just gonna tell you if it's a pdf and it's more than like two pages i won't read it <laughs> like i you just would... i can't well he, you would have to like run the game for us or and that, then he'll, and then yeah. we're really well, good at that. Well, it depends. Too. So here's a couple things. If you provide a pre-gen and you run the game for us, fine. That's easy. I don't need a copy of the rules for that. You know, it'd be nice to have a copy. But if it's a PDF, and I, like I said, it's more than a few pages of rules and stuff, I won't read it. I just can't sit there and read stuff on a screen that's that in-depth. I've never been able to. Um, I have had people who sent me a PDF and then they printed and bound uh, a version and mailed it to me before though because they wanted it looked at and talked oh, about oh yeah then if, so if you print it out then he'll yeah. then he'll read it yeah what He's, you'll sit there and read a whole pdf no i mean 70 I'm just saying, 80 pages or i'm just saying <laughs> i was just trying to explain how you are i am i am totally a physical product person D, &D beyond is nice for 5e because like if you're creating yeah, a like character okay. it just jumps where you need to go uh, so that's kind of nice. You gonna start a new one? Mm, we'll see. What time is it? Nine thirty. Okay. There's so many fun ones, like the dragon sorcerer guys. And... Oh, the dwarf right there in the middle. Where's With the crazy middle? hat. Yeah, he's right okay. here. What about him? Uh, he says, I understand that. I hate reading on a computer, LOL. Yeah, it, like I used to, my day job used to be staring at a screen all day and reading like engineer notes and stuff like that. And that was hard for me. Like I would get very easily distracted and it just, it was tough. Oh, I didn't even look at the backgrounds really earlier. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so here's an, an acolyte. You spent your early days in a religious monastery or cloister. You may have traveled out into the world to spread the message of your religion or because you cast away the teachings of your faith. But deep down, you'll always carry within you the lessons you learned. Choose two ability boosts. One must be to intelligence or wisdom, and one is a free ability boost. So that's where you get your modifier. So like intelligence now would be a plus two, and then whatever else you choose would be a plus two. Gotcha. Is how I'm pretty sure that works. Uh, you're trained in the religion skill and the scribing lore skill. You gain the student of the canon skill feat. Yeah, it's, that's cool. I feel like you're going to have a lot of fun reading through that. I am. I am. Is there 
Yeah, I'm going to show, I'm gonna show the inside cover guy. real quick. Oh, the dragon sorcerer? So look, this is what we were talking about earlier. See the L-O-L-B, L-O-L-D? <laughs> oh, why'd you move it? It was perfect where it was. Uh, I was showing yeah. the L-O-L part. It's supposed, to be, it's supposed to be a V. No, that's supposed to be a V. He tried really hard. Right. He tried. No, he did good. It's cool. Oh, and then the hop. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm going to paint this guy. Yeah, he's cool. He's like a dragonborn. Got this cool cloak. Right? What is he, a sorcerer, you said? Yeah. Would you paint him as gold? A gold dragon? Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking what of... What were you thinking? Um... I didn't figure out a color for the dragon yet, but I was going to originally do a gold cloak, so I could do him oh, gold. Oh, do gold cloak and then make him like a red dragon. I can make him, uh, I can make him a gold dragon, and I'll do a green cloak. I could do a turquoise cloak. Like, that looks cool. If you did choose to go red or something like that, it might help. Mm, right. Let's do turquoise. A turquoise cloak, and let's do a gold dragon. Okay. I like that. That's a great okay. combo. I'm cool with it. Uh, my game is a two stat system. Why is this not closing? There we go. Uh, my game is a two stat system that covers physical and mental abilities and dictates how much physical hit points and mental hit points you get. The stats are called vigor and wits. Oh, that sounds kind of interesting. What is uh, your system made for? Like, what, what setting? I mean, it sounds like you have it pretty pretty well able... Well, what is the well thought out? No. Established? No. What are you talking Sta about? Sound. <laughs> sounds like it's meant to be adaptable to multiple types of settings. Oh, okay. I was like, I don't know what words you're trying to go for. It's okay. I didn't either. You know you're going to have fun with this, too. Oh, yeah, I know. A tinker background. Ooh, that's cool. Ooh. Yeah, there's some good stuff in here. Like, I'm already excited about the possibilities. Yeah, I already know. Like, as a player, I'm going to love it. I'm gonna love it. I hate monks. I really hate monks in like any fantasy game. Why? I just don't like them. I don't like them as player characters. So, okay. The Last Kingdom that we've watched, right? They've got monks in there. And that's how I imagine monks. Or I'm sorry, oh, not monks, but, but whatever they're like, called. No. Religious people. You're thinking like a friar. Yeah, but that's how I want monks in my fantasy games. I don't want them to be badasses who can, like, beat everything up. Like, the way... I feel like monks in fantasy games, it's like they've taken kung fu movies, and that is your monk. And they've pulled it from kung fu movies and put it in a fantasy setting. So for me, it doesn't fit what I like for fantasy in my head. Well, it all started because they're all Buddhists and they did like yoga and stuff. Right. And that's what the... The action economy is a big part of combat slash crunch time. Characters have offense actions for movement and offense stuff. And there are defense actions for defending yourself. Defense actions also cover reactions. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like something I would give a shot. Oh, okay. But what's the it's setting? Kind of like, a... like, would you be... Would it be fantasy? Would it be like... High tech sci fi? Would it be Western? Western? Would it be post apocalyptic? You know, what, what do we got here? What are we thinking? Uh, Vigor and Wits Adventures, my game, is made for any setting. That's what I thought. So, how would you make so what? What is it you would? Because I'm assuming you would run the game for us. Is that correct? Because what would you want to play if you were playing in a whatever setting you could? What would you be interested in trying? 
Well, I don't know. What do you mean, like, whatever setting? Don't you have, like, some sort of year parameter or something like that? I mean, that? you can, but, like, if you could play a Western or a fantasy or a historical thing or science fiction, what would you want to play? Oh, out of those choices? Well, or anything. The choices are endless. It could be anything you want. That's why I'm asking. What sounds interesting to you? I don't know. I've never played anything, but like I played modern. You played I've Star played Wars. Star Wars. I played Star Wars a couple times. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've played fantasy. And superheroes. Oh yeah, that's modern. Mm. Mm. We picked the setting. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> that's- I. That's too. We need like give us like three choices. Yeah, give you us have, two that's, choices. That's two. Narrow it down to two that you could. No, you gotta give us three because no, if two. you give us two, I'm gonna like one and he's gonna like the other, and then there's no like. It doesn't matter what I like. Oh. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, the magic is totally free from only oh free form only restricted by spellcraft rules. Okay. Sounds simple. It sounds like you're trying to keep it fairly simple on the surface. How long until you're done with it? Because I think before you said it's not done. But yeah, I would totally like a copy. I'm always down for a copy of a game. He's always interested. I am. I uh I look this is so bad. I look forward to the day our kids are grown up so I can read all my gaming books. <laughs> no, really really I think when Caleb's in school, Gabe's going to be home by himself and he'll be at a point where um he can probably do a little bit of entertaining himself. I think like if I was home with just Caleb right now, it would probably be easier. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, he's Five. He can right, basically right. do everything. So my point is, is when Gabe gets just a little bit older, it's going to be the same thing because it's just going to be him. The other two are going to be at school. You know yeah. what I mean? So I could definitely read more um, and things like that. And like I have Caleb out here all the time when I'm doing stuff, as long as I'm not doing a video or needing to be in deep thought. You know. So mm-hmm. so I'm I'm totally fine with that too. Uh, but yeah, I would definitely check a system out like that. Right now, I've got like 600 pages to really try to understand a, a system right here. Yeah, I know. I've got about a month to figure it out because I don't think we'll be able to play until July. So, because we've got the 13th game. The, in fact, the only weekend in June, Saturday-wise, is the 6th that I have available right now. Oh, really? Yeah, because we got 13th for Call of Cthulhu. We've got Descent into Avernus. We're going to schedule Black Rock Adventures the weekend after that. We haven't. I was going to wait till this Saturday to make sure. So I was going to ask everyone in person rather than send it through the chat. You know what I mean? Right, see if that works for everybody. Yeah, but basically I'm sure it will. We'll be booked through June. I've got all my interviews booked through June for Tuesdays and Thursdays. Basically my June is full. Wow, are you so popular? I don't know about that. Uh, So he said superheroes original world, classic fantasy original world, or Star Wars modified universe in rebellion era are his three choices. What would you like to play in his world or his setting or his system, I guess? Hmm. Whatever Paula chooses, we'll go with so much pressure not pressure i don't want to make mistakes you're not gonna make a mistake it'd be um, great maybe superheroes really yeah you were just telling it. me how stupid superheroes were the other day well, uh, no i said it's hard to like know what to do sometimes there's so many options okay Superhero as it is. I want to be a gritty um, Batman, Wolverine-esque type of character. That's that's what I like to play. 
not to like not necessarily like brooding or you know anything like that just i like to play um like melee style superheroes that are kind of tough and willing he to sacrifice plays themselves. He the people who kill them, like, kill other people. Well, not necessarily. Batman you doesn't kill almost, anybody. No, you almost always, like, you're like, oh, I'm so pumped about the barbarian. I'm not as big on, like, the ranged type of characters, though. Yeah, like, like that's not you, as appealing to me. Or the stealthy You want to, like, hit things. Yes, I want to be up close and physical is what I'm getting at. Yeah. So just make me a character that's the opposite of his. <laughs> Which is typically what I like. Yup. Although I'm doing a pretty good job with that barbarian. I, I think you're doing great with the barbarian. I love that you're playing a barbarian. It's the most interesting character you've ever played for me as a DM. Yeah. Well, your your cleric that was in the the game with Matt that kept getting hit with the chest with the arrows. I like that cleric too. Because it was a Tempest cleric or a war cleric? I think it was Tempest. Mm -hmm. Storm? Storm cleric, Tempest cleric, whatever it is. Um, but I really liked that. Uh, he said, legit, I'm on a superhero bend right now, and I've been working on the setting for a while. Cool. Yeah, we would definitely play it. Um, feel free to post in our Discord You know, if you need more players. Um, I think we could probably swing a Friday. I don't know, again, mm -hmm. when you're going to be ready to run it. You said you're playing. I can't do a Friday and then a Saturday. You totally could. As a player? Yeah, I'm up so late. You'd be fine. You'd just make me wake up with the kids. You would be fine. The sound was really quiet, Paula. What sort of character did you want? Oh, I said just make something that's the opposite of his. Usually, I, I don't know. Her favorite D&D &D class is a sorcerer. Yeah, I, I like, like, the smart... In, in West End, or in Fantasy Flight Game Star Wars, she loved playing the bounty hunter. She was blowing stuff up from, like, range. It was great. Um, yeah, I don't know. So, favorite, like, superhero or whatever style characters for me, like, for X-Men, I like, um... What's her name? Who turns into other people? Mystique? Yeah, I like Mystique. She's my favorite X-Men. Her and Storm. The, those are the two. The Storm's two a good one. Um, Storm's great. I loved my favorite superhero movie of all the movies that came out was uh, Doctor Strange. Because yeah, he's fantastic. Like, his type of character in a movie is always going to be my favorite character. Yeah. Like, the, you know... Jerk? Really smart, ironic person. Yeah. You know? So, I know exactly what I want. So, I want my character to be, like, a cross between Batman and Wolverine. Now, rather than having claws that come out of his fist, I want, like... Claw, like a, a single blade that comes out like the Assassin's Creed blade from my, like the underside of my forearm and goes out like a foot but like I can retract it into my my forearm again like into that you know what I mean oh yeah that's what I want because like oh that would be so cool I don't care if that is like my superpower or if it's a gadget I'd probably prefer it to be more of a superpower though because I think that would be cooler rather than like it comes out of like my suit or something you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think I'd want to be like that. Yeah. And then um, I would also, oh, you know what else might be cool? A leaping ability. I don't know how many things I get to choose, but that and then a, like a leaping ability where I could literally leap like 15 feet at you. Like a pounce. Like, use those blades, have them coming out while I'm coming down on you. That would be so cool. Couldn't you imagine that in, like, a movie or something? Yes. Like, a sweet, like, real... That's basically what Wolverine does. Not really. It is. Not really. He basically just... He can't leap. He doesn't have a leaping ability. He 
jumps up all the time in those he's movies. He's five and foot like seven. Comes he's... down on people. No, no, no. He's, that's not what I'm thinking. Not at all. Not at all. Okay. Not. I mean, sure, but it's not. That's not what I'm thinking. It's like I said. It is still Wolverine influence, but that's not where I'm at. I'm thinking like a very dark, gritty, like Spawn type setting, like where it's all Gotham City. Like terribleness, <laughs> but yeah, that's what I think would be really cool to play as. My interview was so cool today with Crystal. We were talking about superheroes and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles being her favorite, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, she's a big collector of it, and uh, she even grabbed her TMNT RPG, which I have too. I was like, "Oh, mine's right there. I want to grab it so bad." <laughs> I was like, "If I do it, I'm gonna knock over my lights." <laughs> But yeah, I was like, yeah, it's, that was the second book I owned. I think that was her first. Um, but yeah, it was cool. It was a good conversation. I've been having a lot of fun talking to uh, industry professionals and stuff. It's been, it's been a pretty, pretty good time. So, all right. Um, yeah, there's just, this is interesting to me that you could be like, Level one with 22 hit points. But it makes sense. If something could attack you three times, you need some hit points. Yeah, I mean, it's probably not going to help you out any more than... You know what I'm saying? Mm Mm-hmm. Like, it's still the same. Oh, I just noticed that says top chat rather than live chat. I hate that it defaults to that. Absolutely hate that it defaults to top chat. Hmm. It's fine. Hmm. Whatever. All right. So I'm looking at the barbarian right now. Uh, during this is this is kind of cool. I like how they did this. Uh, during social encounters, you use intimidation to get what you need, especially when gentler persuasion can't get the job done. While exploring, you look out for danger, ready to rush headfirst into battle in an instant. You climb the challenging rock wall and drop a rope for others to follow. And you wade into the risky currents to reach the hidden switch beneath the water surface. If something needs breaking, you're up to the task. In downtime, you might head to a tavern to carouse, build up the fearsome legend of your mighty deeds, or recruit followers to become a warlord in your own right. (laughs) You might have a deep-seated well of anger, hatred, or frustration. Prefer a straightforward approach to one requiring patience and tedium. Engage in a regimen of intense physical fitness and punch anyone who stays, who says this conflicts with your distaste for patience and tedium. Others probably rely on your courage and your strength and trust that you can hold your own in a fight. See you as an uncivilized or a boorish lout unfit for high society. Believe that you are loyal to your friends and allies and will never relent until the fight is done. I love it. He likes what he has to work with. That's good. Perfect. Cool. Yeah, we'll figure something out. And then uh, we'll have to get some people. Like I said, I don't know. It'd be cool to have at least at least one other player, possibly two, though. Uh, I'm, I love superhero games, so I'm excited. I also, if, if that doesn't work, if you'd rather just make me a guy with a big gun... Uh, maybe I'm like a time traveler and I got a big gun from the Now future. you're giving him extra ideas and he's going to be like, oh crap, which one do I do? Because I mean, the Wolverine style right. one is the best. But, depending on the the other characters, if it makes more sense to just make me a guy who carries a big gun and, you know, Duke Nukem's everything, like, I don't know. Duke Nukem's such a poor example. Uh but basically, I just blow my way up through stuff. That'd be cool. It's like a Hawkeye with a big gun rather than a bow. Okay, man. All right. So, yeah. there. It's very interesting. Very interesting. Oh, excuse me. Ooh, Ty Yerk been a long week already tomorrow's friday isn't it well it for sure is that's why i was like i can't believe i got that email at seven o'clock at night saying like 
Oh, maybe you can throw something together, like by a 10 a.m. meeting, you just want an interactive, functional dashboard that tracks all our sales and margin by country and customer. <laughs> no big deal. Like, shh, you just, you know? Nobody wants to hear about it. Sorry. I'm just like, <laughs> and she was like, we're better with visuals. Like, yeah, but you also said it to me like 7 o'clock at you night. You replied? So... Even though I told you not to? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. So don't reply if it's after hours. Just in the morning, be like, I can't have something ready in an hour like that. <laughs> like, and, and be realistic. Be like, it would probably take me this long to come up with something real quick. Set yeah. expectations. Set the clear expectations moving forward. Yeah, I love this. Oh, cool. So how does that work? You can be, your proficiency ranks for light armor, medium armor, and unarmored defense increase to expert. So how does that work with armor? So in this, you have different tiers of proficiency rather than putting mm -hmm. skill ranks and stuff like in old 3.5. So look, see the T, T means trained, E means like expert, M is master, and L is like legendary, I think. Okay. And so that's your level of proficiency. Now, I think you still can put ranks in things. Yeah, you put Yeah, it in. so up here. No, but it's still different, though. So if you're legendary, it's 8 plus level. So that would be your proficiency. So you don't put ranks in it like you used to, actually. So as you move up a proficiency, that's how it works. So that's one of the things they streamline. So that's still crazy, though. Think about it. Legendary is 8 plus your level. So if you're level 20, that's 28 just from that, not counting, like, what your dex bonus would be or your, you know what I mean? So the numbers are still high, but they're not the same as they used to be. Because I think before you'd get for your level and you would get for the ranks you put into it, if I remember right. Be realistic, but add two or three hours on top. She might have to add two or three days on top, to be honest, for what they want. <laughs> she'll she'll be deleting stuff out of spreadsheets, and it'll take her a day to delete it because it's going so slow sometimes. Because <laughs> it can't handle all the information that's in there. Well, it was just kind of like our meeting at 10 is a brainstorming session. So like on what they wanted to see. So I'm not, I'm not really sure, you know. Well, clearly what, they are not on the same page Obviously I didn't understand. Like, I mean, the brainstorming session is to figure out whether we even want to do the project. I'm not going to do it. Right. The question is, what do you want to see so I know how long it's going to take? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Probably going to get this gold down and then put going. Okay, no like problem. inside or something. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost ready to go to bed. I'm, I'm going to try, I think, to make a character this weekend on this. My barbarian. I don't know what race I'm going to do. What race should I be? There's only six. There's a... Uh, Elves, there's dwarves, there's humans, there's a half orc which counts as a human, and a half elf that counts as a human. There's a goblin, halfling, and gnome. You should be a gnome. I don't know. I don't think for my first one that'll work. No? No. Should. Should I do the cliche and just be a half orc barbarian as my first character? I mean, I thought you could be a goblin. But those looked cool. I do think the goblin art in here is really good. I do like it. This is a really pretty book. Well, let me see if any of this makes sense for me being a barbarian. Uh, goblin herit heritages. Choose one of the following gob goblin heritages. At first level, char hide goblin. Your ancestors have always had a connection to fire and a thicker skin, which allows you to resist burning. You gain fire resistance equal to half your level. You can also recover from being on fire more easily. 
Your flat check to remove persistent fire damage is DC 10 instead of 15, which is reduced to DC 5 if another creature uses a particularly appropriate action to help. Iron Gut Goblin. You can subsist on food that most folk will consider spoiled. <laughs> oh, that sounds great. Uh, you can keep yourself fed with poor meals in a settlement as long as garbage is readily available without using the subsist downtime activity. You can eat and drink things when you are sickened. You gain a plus two circumstance bonus to saving throws again. That actually, I actually like that one. So be a goblin. Hang on, hang on. Razor tooth goblin. Your family's teeth are a formidable weapon. You gain a Jaws unarmed attack that deals 1d6 piercing damage. Your Jaws are in the brawling group and have the finesse and unarmed traits. Snow Goblin. You are acclimated to living in frigid lands and have skin ranging from sky blue to navy in color, as well as blue fur. You gain cold resistance equal to half your level. Oh, that's kind of cool. Unbreakable. You're able to bounce back from injuries easily due to an exceptionally thick skull. Cartilaginous bones or some other mixed blessing. You gain 10 hit points from your ancestry instead of 6. When you fall, reduce the falling damage you take as though you had fallen half the distance. Ooh, that one's kind of good. I could see that. Do an unbreakable. What's everyone eating for dinner tonight? Well, it's 10.07 for us. So... No. We actually had a really good dinner, though. Paula made uh, some salmon and chicken nuggets for the kids, which I had a couple of those, too. And some potatoes and carrots. And am I missing anything? Salad. Oh, and a salad. Spinach salad. Right? That was spinach. And uh, it was good. So, yeah. That's what we had. What do you have? Or what are you having, Amper Sandman? I'm assuming it must be the West Coast for you around 7 o'clock if you're talking about dinner. <laughs> That's a late dinner, though, still. Uh, all right. Well, it is for us because we have smaller children. So at first level, you get to choose a feat. So what... I want to hear a little bit about like the spellcasters. Oh, in here? Yeah. Like a class? So you want to see, like, the sorcerer? Yeah, like, I don't know. You want, look, you want to try to look at your favorite? Okay, there's a wizard. Wizard's just... I mean, in this, it'll be better, because you can customize them a lot more. But sorcerer is probably going to be the one you like. Although, I think you would like the alchemist, too. So I got, so Paula bought me the Pathfinder 2nd Edition Core Rulebook and gave it to me today as an early Father's Day gift because I've been talking about it so much, which is cool. It was pretty awesome. Um, okay, so looking at this. Sorcerer. Uh, do you need me to read this stuff like I did with the Barbarian? Or do you want me to go into like the actual mechanics of it? No, like... Tell me what different kinds of sorcerers there are. Okay. Um, so, bloodlines. Uh, you choose... Choose a bloodline that gives you your spellcasting talent. This choice determines the type of spells you cast and the spell list you choose from. Additional spells you learn and additional train skills. You also gain focus points and special focus spells based on your bloodline. The bl bloodlines presented in this book are as follows. Aberrant. A strange and unknowable influence gives you occult spells. Angelic. Holy Grace bestows divine spells upon you. Demonic. A sinful corruption that gives you divine spells. Diabolic. A bond with devils gives you divine spells. Draconic, the blood of dragons, grants you arcane spells. Elemental, the power of the elements manifests in you as primal spells. Fey, influence from the fey gives you primal spells. Hag, the blight of a hag has given you occult spells. Imperial, an ancient power grants you arcane spells. And undead, the touch of death gives you divine spells. 
So what are occult spells? I assume that's like... I have no idea. Um, talks about sorcerer spell casting, spell repertoire. So at first level, you would have five cantrips and three first level spells. Oh, cool. Yeah, so that's quite a bit. Uh, that's Yeah, that's a lot of cantrips. You always only have five cantrips, though. Right, so that's kind of it. Yep. As for spell slots of... Oh. Yeah, that's spells per day. That's how many... Well, no, because cantrips are just known. They're free. You, you can do them as many as you want. Um, as you gain new spells in your spell repertoire, you might want to replace some of the spells you previously learned. Each time you gain a level and learn new spells, you can swap out one of your old spells for a different spell of the same level. This spell can be a cantrip, but you can't swap out bloodline spells. You can also swap out spells by retraining during downtime. Uh, ampersand man nope i'm east coast i'm having two cans of campbell's beefy mushroom soup i chopped up a habanero pepper in it for a little spice oh that sounds good actually minus the habanero pepper <laughs> so what he's saying is that soup sounds good i mean i'm hungry <laughs> i'm like hungry all the time lately maybe i'm pregnant <laughs> clearly that's the problem all right so Aberrant was talking about occult spells. So spell list occult is page 311. So I'll just look quickly at the occult spells. Okay. Cult cantrips, chill touch, uh, dancing lights, daze, detect magic, forbidding ward, ghost sound, guidance, no direction, <laughs> no direction. That's a podcast for Pathfinder. Sorry. <laughs> Light, Mage Hand, Message, Prestidigitation, Read Paul oh, Prestidigitation for you. Read Aura, Shield, Sigil, Telekinetic Projectile. Hmm, that's interesting. First level, Bane. I'm skipping most of them, but Floating Disc, Grim Tendrils. Creatures in a line take negative damage and bleed. Mage Armor. Magic Missile. So it's, I mean, Ray of Enfeeblement is a good one. I'm not quite what I was thinking. Okay. What were you thinking? Well, I don't know. Necrotic? It's called Occult Spells. Yeah, that's not exactly what I so was you're thinking. Only, so that would be Necrotic Spells. I'm having taco salad. Okay, Cameron. Don't say anything, Paula. What are you using for your chips? Like, stop, do stop, you... Stop. No, I'm going to give an example. Oh, okay. Like, do you use, like... Doritos like nacho chips or do you use like tortilla chips like plain chips yeah like Tostitos yeah we need to know Cameron that's all we're gonna say yeah it's very important it's really important though so like please all right so ninth oh tenth level occult spells alter reality warp reality to duplicate occult spells fabricated truth make creatures believe something is fact gate tear open a portal to another plane Remake, recreate a destroyed object, and time stop. Briefly stop time for everyone, or for everything but you. Uh, ampersand man homemade. Oh, taco salad. Yeah. Probably. Taco salad's so good. Throw some sour cream in there. Some meat with taco seasoning. Some spinach. Some diced onions and tomatoes. Some non-meat with taco seasoning. No, that sounds awful. Now you're getting ahead of yourself. I should make a, I should make a sorcerer. No, I'm just kidding. You're not going to make a sorcerer. I don't know. So, again, when you have options to manipulate the character, I'm a little more open to the idea. You know what I mean? Like, in 5e, I like the warlock. But I like it because I can alter it into a way that's interesting to me. The wizard is so not interesting to me because it's almost every wizard is the same in 5e, I feel. They're, I don't feel like the differences are enough. However, to throw heavy armor on a wizard might be cool or something but like that. But store-bought regular tortilla chips. Cameron. <sighs> so wrong. Store bought. Regular you gotta have Doritos. Chips. You gotta have and nacho cheese. Cameron is great. We know Cameron is great. We trust him. Because he always sides with you. 
Because he's always right, no. like I am. You gotta use Doritos, man. Doritos, nacho cheese Doritos. I appreciate That's what... That's how you do taco salads. You're saying, Cameron. I grew up poor. That's how everybody did it. Every, like, pot no, work at work... No, that's how you do, like... Everyone like, did Doritos. picnic in. taco salad. But when you want to make, like, a real, no. like, a good no, that's taco not a good, salad... No, that's not a good taco like, salad. No. Yeah, that's I mean, how it's you fine. It. It's fine. It doesn't taste as good, though. It doesn't taste quite as good. Damn it, I just realized I can't have chips in it. I just had tooth surgery. <laughs> well, that sucks. <laughs> I mean, what if you had the chips in it to the point where they got soggy, though? Then you might be able to do it. So, Ampersandman says, I eat some homemade salsa with Doritos. I've never heard of someone using salsa on their dorito oh i've totally done that before it's great salsa is wonderful i really want some doritos <laughs> that would be great right now we do not have any chips oh man some gummy why can't i have chips i said we don't have oh any. i know we don't have any i know we have nothing <laughs> we cleaned that stuff out this week <laughs> oh that's good all right, so just now I'm curious. So now that I've looked at this for aberrant, draconic, the blood of dragons. At first level, choose the type of... Oh, actually, you know what? Let's look at aberrant again. Uh, ooh, okay. So you get bloodline skills, intimidation and occultism, automatic spells, cantrip days, first level spider sting, second touch of idiocy, Third is Vampiric Touch. Fourth is Confusion. Fifth is Black Tentacle. Sixth is Feeble Mind. Seventh is Warp Mind. Eighth is Uncontrollable Dance. Ninth is Unfathomable Song. So those are the spells you automatically get. Sorry. Gotcha. And okay. then I'm sure you can choose any of the other spells, but these are the ones you uh, that you definitely get. Bloodline Spells. Tent, uh, tentacular Limbs. Uh, aberrant whispers and unusual anatomy. Well, that sounds kind of freaky. Blood magic. Aberrant whispers shield. One target's mind or your own, granting a plus two status bonus to will saving throws for one round. Uh, angelic gets an angelic aura from their blood magic. Interesting. Ew, soggy chips. Only a nacho casserole. Well, see. The thing about taco salad is you can get the crisp from the lettuce, right? Like if you use iceberg lettuce mixed with like some good lettuce and some spinach, like you can get a crisp from the lettuce, right? So soggy I mean, chips aren't yeah. the worst thing in a taco right. salad, especially if they're Doritos. So there's actually some taste to it rather than a, tor a salty tortilla chip. I'm just saying No. <laughs> oh, I have too much fun with this. Sorcerer feats. I still like that bespell weapon feat. That's cool. Yeah, you can do things like reach spells, widen spells. Add five feet to the radius of a burst that normally has a radius of at least ten feet. Add five feet to the length of a cone or line that is normally 15 feet long or smaller. Add 10 feet to the length of a larger cone or line. Yeah, there's some good stuff. See, this is the stuff I like, though. This is what gets me excited about characters, because it's like, you can do so much. You can make the exact same character and just change a couple feet out, and it's completely different. You know? I mean, yeah. Like, that's what's exciting to me. Sample Sorcerer. Demon Blood. Alright. Wizard. Ooh. You let me know when you uh, are done, by the way. I know. I was like, oh, I should be done. But then I'm like, oh, I should get a base coat on everything. And then I'm like, oh, it's going to take too long. Wizards can do five cantrips and two first level spells per day. 
Belly Book. Arcane School. And there's Universalist Wizards, too. I think this is the same as first edition in that regard. Oh, here we go. Arcane Schools. So you learn a school spell, special type of spell taught to students of your arcane school. How many do you get to choose? If you specialize in an arcane school, rather than studying each school equally, as your universalists do, you gain an extra spell slot for each level of spell you can cast. That sounds huge. So it sounds like you would want to focus in. Uh, you can prepare only spells of your chosen arcane school in these extra slots. In addition, you can prepare an extra cantrip of your chosen school. You also add another arcane spell of your chosen school to your spell book. If you learn a school spell, blah, 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 blah. So are the school spells the exact same as all the sorcerer stuff? No. Abjuration. Oh, see, that's, that's another, like... Divination, enchantment, evocation, illusion, necromancy, transmutation. So they're not the same spells that sorcerers get. Oh, they might be the same spells. There's oh, probably okay. a lot of overlap there, just like in other games. But the schools are different than, like, your bloodlines. Like, none of these say a cult, right? Why? Like, I'm trying to... Like, the only reason I think someone might do a universalist wizard is because they have access to all the wizard spells. That's the only reason you would do that. But you would have less spells that you can cast per day. So, in other words, you're still a lesser effective wizard in that sense, right? Yeah, but you're less specialized. Right? Uh, I mean... Yes, if you're a universalist. Man, I feel like making some uh, necromancy wizards would be kind of fun with Andrew and Erica. <laughs> I know, I was actually kind of thinking, like, I don't know if my brother could play this. Oh, he could. Game. He could. It would just be too many decisions. Can you imagine him making a... He would take him four hours to make a character. Or problem solve. Yeah, I think it would take him too long. I mean, it'd take me a while, too, probably. Uh, at first, but I think once you make a couple, I think you'll you'll be fine. Sorry, guys. I was responding to a comment on my uh, RPG talk today with Crystal Frazier um, about mutants and master numbers. Um, they wanted us... To, apparently, they wanted me to ask some stuff that I never got around to asking uh, about a new edition of Mutants and Masterminds. So, yeah. That's unfortunate. All right. Uh, almost 10.30. I think that's going to be really cool when it's done, though. I think so, too. Like, it looks kind of crazy right now because the colors are really bright, but they're going to get really dark. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm going to make everything... I'm going to make everything pretty dark, except... Yeah, I was going to say, if you can I'm gonna make, make it dark... I'm going to make him, like, his face... Stand out. Is going to be bright, like it's yeah. like white, and then it's going to go to gold. Oh, cool. And and even though his cape is like a teal, it's going to be a darker teal yes, because of the I'm wash. Gonna okay, take cool. It, I'm going to take it all down Because Chance really Star low, is mostly going to be a bad guy. So that his head is really, his face is really bright. Yeah. And then I'll do something really um, bright with this. So with the other one, we should make it like a red dragon. Not a, not a metallic dragon. Do you know what I mean? Oh, okay. Like a green or a red or a blue or a black. We green did blue, though, on the one. 
We yeah. haven't done a green yet. So let's make the other one a green one. Green would be cool. Cool. Do like a, almost like a neon. If you want. I'm kind of imagining the other one as more like a warlock. So like dark yeah, what colors. The other, one looks like. the other one's got his hand out, I think. It's cool though. Okay. All right. You're good? Yeah. You ready? We could probably go. Okay. This is so good. The archetype stuff throws me off. The multi-class. Because that's a multi-class thing. Mm -hmm. So that throws me off. I don't like calling it an archetype. <laughs> oh, a barbarian alchemist. Can mix mutagens with their rage to ferocious effect. Uh, fighter alchemists can use their alchemy to gain additional potions or options in situations where their usual tactics don't work. Ranger alchemists focus on alchemy and snares, getting extra use out of their crafting skill and supplying bombs for the bomb snare. Rogue alchemists can combine a rogue's poison feats with free daily poisons and yeah, and bombs present present. An interesting way to sneak attack with various types of energy damage. Sorry, guys. The, the page is folded. Not folded, but bending there. <laughs> Spellcasting alchemists often use their alchemical items to take pressure off their repertoire of prepared spells. For instance, a wizard alchemist who can brew up dark sight elixirs to grant dark vision can prepare another spell instead of dark vision. Interesting. Well, that would be kind of fun. Yeah, some of these uh, in general just sound kind of kind of cool. Okay, so under alchemist, it's got those bullet points. Under barbarian, though, it doesn't. <laughs> it's just like a barbarian archetype is a great choice for characters that emphasize strength and melee attacks more than usual for their class, as long as they can handle rage's spellcasting restriction. It's especially good for characters looking to add more damage. Like, it doesn't tell you how you would cross it with another one, like, for Alchemist. Like, the Alchemist write-up is way, is really good. but Maybe it's a really, the Alchemist multi-class is really common. Yeah, the Bard one is, like, one sentence. Champion is, like, one sentence. Yeah. Oh, here we go. The Cleric's got some good ones. <laughs> he said, Pathfinder 2nd Edition sounds cooler with everything you read. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, everything I've looked at in here and heard about before now is cooler <laughs> with everything I see. Uh, Alchemist clerics work well with the chirurgeon field, which is healing, in case you guys don't know. Healing various ailments with either alchemy or spells. Martial clerics are typically looking for a potent domain spell or some healing to use in a pinch. Divine Sorcerer Clerics double down as the ultimate Divine Spellcasters. Other Spellcaster Clerics diversify their options, becoming Phergic characters who combine two magical traditions. Druid has a short write-up. Uh, Fighter has some interesting stuff. Barbarian Fighters can combine their talents with two-handed weapons with some of the fighter's two-handed feats to devastating effect. Champion fighters focus on a style of combat exemplified by their deity. A shield-using champion benefits from the best of both worlds in shield feats. Monk fighters are great at combining unusual weapon styles. For instance, a monk's isn't hindered by a restriction to keep one hand free because they want to punch you with that hand anyway. Uh, Multi-class monk. Barbarian monks with the animal instinct can combine the barbarian's excellent unarmed damage with the monk's diverse unarmed special abilities. Champion monks are perfect for champions of Aurori or other deities who favor unarmed attacks. Fighter monks can supplement freehand fighting and add mobility to the fighter's toolkit. Rogue monks are incredibly effective because stances grant some of the best agile finesse attacks and Flurry gives more sneak attacks. Spellcaster monks can fight with a free hand and still use material components to cast spells. Yeah, that sounds pretty wild. 
Like I was telling, um, I had Luis uh, Loza, mm-hmm. uh, who's the Lost Omens Pathfinder line developer, and I was telling him that I feel like Pathfinder would be perfect for like a Final Fantasy VII, like themed thing. You know what I mean? Like the system just works for it because you can do so much like cool stuff like that. Yeah. What did yeah. he say? He agreed. He said it would it would probably work really well. He had some other cool ideas too. We were, I think. I don't remember if it was him, but I think we were talking about Dragon Prince as well. Because that's, you know, on Netflix, that's like one of my favorite shows. Mm-hmm. Um, but that would work really well, too. That one has some interesting dynamics. Uh, multi-class Rangers. That's got some good stuff. Rogues has some good stuff. Like, some of these have really good write-ups. Others, not as much. It looks like you can even do these at like as soon as second level. I don't know how that works. Uh, Sorcerer has no write up really. Wizard has no write up really. That's a bummer. And then it gets into skills. Okay. All right. You should just end this stream so that I put this. You're good. Just put it down. Color away. I always end it, and then you're out here for another ten minutes painting still. So I might as well just keep it going until you, till you uh, finish, finish. So but yeah, I agree. Pathfinder is it's pretty sweet. I I'll have to admit this as a player. This looks like a BAMF. <laughs> BAMF. Again, I still think it would be difficult to run it. Um, but I think once I have some understanding and I've created a few characters and I know how they work, it might not be that bad. Yeah, you just have to get back into like the sec- the 3.5 mindset, like the Pathfinder mindset, and you'll be fine. Right. Yeah, because it like, would be the same prep that I normally do, right? Like, Except I would probably modify my monsters a little more and balance it a little more because of the whole three action economy thing you know like i would abide by the the yeah the well and when you're figuring stuff. it out at first you kind of need to yeah it's sort of like oh when you really when you start dming you're like oh i need to pay attention to like you know mm-hmm. difficulty ratings or ci ratings or whatever you want to call them yeah and then after a while you're just like eh you know what I really like this guy, so we're just going to use him. Right. Well, and I mean, you'll know, I think... I mean, obviously, there's more range of variety in player characters, too, though. So, like, just because the party's, like, fourth level, because of the options with feats, there's still a lot to take into account there. Like, is this character really heavily focused on area of effect? Or are they a solo hitter? Are they skill focused? Are they defense focused? Like, you know what I mean? Yep. So it's there's more complexity in that regard than 5e in that regard. But I've always felt like I do well with that, like taking into account what my players can do, as long as they provide me their character sheets. <laughs> you know, which can be a problem because, you know, it's not like I have D&D Beyond I can just pull up for Pathfinder and look at what someone made. You That's know? That's true. So. Uh, hopefully, though, it wouldn't be too hard for people to fill out the sheet, um, fill out the PDF, and send it to me. You know, ahead of time, not like the day of the game, but like if we played a session, I said level up, and the next day they send me their leveled up character sheet, that's ideal. Rather than, oh, it's a day before the game session, here you go, this is what I took. <laughs> anyway, this guy looks kind of rough right now. He'll be fine, though. No, I think he's going to look cool. I think he will. I like his outfit. I think it'll look good. So it sounds like we're going to wrap there. So again, if this is your first time here, uh, remember to like and subscribe. And we will probably come on tomorrow night. Uh, If we don't, it'll be Sunday, though. Um, Because we don't have anything going on this Sunday. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Uh, Thank you, Ampersand Man and Cameron. Uh, You guys are wonderful as always. Game on.